Good morning. Had to do a little sidetrack over there because technology didn't quite uh, jive in there. You got it going? Cool, thanks. I don't know what I would do without this guy. Can we give a big hand to Bryce? One of the, uh, you, you, you may not be aware, but uh, we've made uh, some, some staffing changes, and uh, the woman who was just up here, I, she's so new on staff, I forget her name. No. But Bethany, didn't she do a great job? <laughs> Bethany is, for now, our part-time children's ministry director, and I say for now, because Bethany keeps on coming up with new ideas, and things just keep popping, and she's going to be like full-time and a half pretty soon, um, but it, she has been just such a blessing to our, uh, to our staff, and uh, some of you have asked, so Scott Aker, does he have a job? Um, because I, whenever I come to church, I see him here, and Scott Aker is, ha, was actually uh, part-time with us as a tech and media director, and Scott, at the beginning of this year, went full-time with River Hills Church. It's been a while since I've had another full-time person on staff with me, and uh, so Scott has been uh, full time. You might let's let's clap for Scott. He's not here today, but he's with us online. And uh, they are down in Galesburg, Illinois, uh, or maybe they're they're in route right now. But uh, they are down there visiting with Amber's parents, and he wanted to watch basketball with his father-in-law. So, man, anyone who says they want to watch basketball with their father-in-law, I'm like, go, go. You know, that, that is so cool, isn't it? And then uh, Scott will, will often say that, that Bryce is his assistant. And I'm like, no, 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 stop. I don't have an assistant. You don't have an assistant. Bryce is our intern uh, in the tech and media department. He's taking a gap year right now. He graduated from high school, and he wasn't sure what, what he was going to be doing. And uh, he got a job making candy, and I said, do you want to make candy all your life? No. I said, I'll, I'll tell you something that I think you have a propensity for, and we would love to help you with your gap year, and you could be uh, a media and tech intern. Uh, because with all that has happened, particularly post-COVID, uh, with church online, uh, it has just exploded, and it is a, uh, an occupation that a person could, could find, but far beyond, I was going to say, could find anywhere in the country, if not the world, but far beyond that, it is a true ministry. Uh, and anyone who's considering uh, entering ministry, it is a great gateway uh, into ministry because as those of you who are online and help us online know, uh, there, there are people out there. And we don't even know how many. Our, our metrics, we understand, are just the tip of an iceberg, and it is so cool. So Bryce is not just a technical intern, but let's pray for him that God would put a burden for ministry in his heart. Okay, let's not tell him that, but let's just pray for him. God, put a burden for ministry in Bryce's heart. And we thank you for every volunteer who is in ministry around here, volunteers and paid staff. God, we just thank you for the gifts that you give to them. And we pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. And then someone who isn't yet on staff, but I hope one day, Zach. Zach has just been, been hitting it out of the park. I missed you, dude. How many weeks were you gone? Two weeks? No, no, it felt like three I'm serious. This guy is, uh, he has such a servant's heart, and he was actually in a, a ministry training program at a previous church down in Cape Coral, Florida, Cape Christian. Thank you, Cape Christian, for all that you built into this guy and then sent him our way. Uh, but Zach has a real heart for ministry, too. And uh, it's not just the technical stuff, but uh, his, his heart beats for the things that Jesus' heart beats for, and uh, it's so fun to be uh, on staff with these guys. So let's give a big hand to our staff and all of our volunteers who make up this church. 
And we do that because, can you say these words with me? We are the church. And this is the series that we're wrapping up today. Next week, we might do a little batting cleanup. Next week is the first Sunday of the month. We typically uh, are going to have a message about prayer, kind of a mini message about prayer, and then go into communion in in an extended act of worship. Um, But uh, next week, because Maundy Thursday, that is the Thursday before Good Friday, it's Holy Week, okay? So we're not going to do our our typical thing next week. What we're going to do on Sunday, it's Palm Sunday, uh, we are not going to have communion. We're going to wait to have communion together on Monday, Thursday, so that Thursday evening, and I would invite you to, to be a part of that. If, you're, if you work online, that, that service will be streamed, and uh, we would love to have you be a part of us and to celebrate communion with us. So I just wanted to kind of clarify that, and then if there's anything that we need to touch on about this uh, about this series next week, we'll integrate that with our message on prayer. And uh, as promised from last month on our prayer message, we're going to be looking at some practical, actionable steps on, on listening for the voice of God in prayer and in our lives. So that's, uh, that's what's on for next week. But here we are this week. So let's, uh, let's get rolling. If you have a Bible, you might want to uh, pull it out. If you have a uh, a device. You can go to Bible.com. You can go to BibleGateway.com. You can go to the U version. Um, and we're going to be looking at a couple of different places. We're going to be in Genesis chapters one and two. We're going to be in Philippians chapter one. And I'd encourage you to uh, be ready uh, for that. In particular, uh, Philippians chapter one and verse seven. But I want to start with uh, with something um, that that happened last night. And uh, we, we had a number of guests in our home last night, and I, I have to confess that, that the way the place looked, I typically would not be comfortable having guests in our home. I mean, this is what it looked like on, on the counter when, when people were there. I mean, there's flour everywhere. There's tomato sauce on the floor. Um, everybody had to wear, wear a, a, an apron because it was just such a stinking mess. I mean, look at that. Would, would, would you, if you walked into somebody's house and their, their kitchen counter looked like that, what, what would you say? You'd say, that's a mess, right? So why don't you turn to your neighbor and just say, that's a mess. I don't hear you saying it. Just because my wife is in the room, don't worry about her, okay? Just say, that's a mess. In fact, that's a freaking mess. Turn to the neighbor on the other side of you and say, that's a freaking mess, isn't it? Okay, now, if you're online, I, I'd like you to, to make that, that same confession, okay? Just, just go ahead and in the, uh, in the comment box, just, just go ahead and say, that's a mess. And now, what you just did, uh, at least some of you, if you followed my advice. Denny, did, did you only talk to your wife? Did, 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 did you? You talked to, okay, so you guys made a group of three, and you guys are a group of, of three, and that, that's great because these, these little groups of three are going to make a point for me this morning, and that's this. There uh, was a recent study done by, by Harvard University, and the, the study states this, our report suggests that 36% of all Americans, so roughly one out of your group of three, okay, a little bit more than that, one out of your group of three, for this, it suggests, it suggests, it suggests, I need to do what? Oh, okay. I need to do that. Okay. There we go. This report suggests that you, one of you, believes that you have needs in your life and no one to meet them. That you have hurts in your life 
and no one to listen to them. That you have love to give, but no one to receive that love. This study was entitled Loneliness in America, How the Pandemic Has Deepened an Epidemic of Loneliness and What We Can Do About It. It comes from the Making Caring Common Project out of the Graduate School of Education at Harvard University. And here's what it says. Now, note that the one in three is conservative, not just against the 36%, but look at this. Our report suggests that 36% of all Americans, including 61% of young adults. Now, stop a second. A young adult. We're, we're talking from age 18 to 30. Young adults, 61% of young adults, and 51% of young moms, of moms with young children. Will you say those last three words with me? Feel serious loneliness. Sixty-one percent of young adults feel that they have needs that no one can meet. That they have love to give that, that there's no one to receive. Does that, does that break your heart? But you see, that might be true, but what I want to communicate today is that God didn't intend for things to be this way. God did not intend for people to live lives of loneliness. And that's why when we say these words, and will you say them with me again? We are the church. What's the first word? We. And so this morning, this final message is entitled, and I want us to get the pronoun right. We, us, our. There's nothing that bugs me more when someone comes up to me, and particularly if they've been here for, for a few months, and they, they say, well, I, I, I really like your church. And I stop them and I say, no, 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 no. This is not my church. This is our church. We are in this together. What happens to one happens to all of us. You see, we, us, and our. Now, I can make that point in a number of, of different ways, but one of the ways I want to do it is to show you this passage because in, in the life of the church, particularly in, in the first century, there, there was a, a spiritual uh, kind of giant. And his, his spiritual giantness got him into trouble a lot of times. And He's, he's writing from a place of trouble. He's going to reveal that in the second half of this verse. He's, he's in jail right now. Jail. I've, I've not been there, but I know it's a lonely place. And he says this, a man by the name of Paul, he says, in writing to a, a church that he helped get going, he says, it's no wonder I pray with such confidence since you have a permanent place in my heart. A permanent place. Not, you know, it's not just a fleeting thing. You don't just go to church, right? We talked about that in the first week. We don't just go to this, right? We don't just go to this building. That's not what the church is. What is the church? Us. We. We are the church. And the, the church are Christ followers together. People following Christ together. And so Paul can say, 
Paul can say, you all have a permanent place in my heart. And I imagine that when, when he was writing those words to, to this little gathering of Christ followers in this town called Philippi, that there were people that, that he hadn't even met face to face yet, right? And I, I'm assuming that he's had some kind of correspondence here. And maybe he's heard about si- situations or maybe he heard that, 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 that Sally started coming and that, that, that Joe saw Sally coming and, and Joe, Joe had kind of a crush on Sally, so, so, so Joe started coming too. And, and Joe and Sally both, both became Jesus followers. And, and so, so Paul writes, you all have a permanent place. And I just made all that stuff up, right? I mean, you, you know that, right? I mean, don't, don't go looking for Joe and Sally in the concordance of your Bible, you know. Oh, Dennis is a liar. It doesn't say that. Um, but you all have a permanent place in, in my heart. You have remained partners with me in the wonderful grace of God. We are, we are together, Paul is saying. Here, here's this spiritual giant, the Apostle Paul, no less, right? And he says to, to these peons in Philippi, and again, I say that sarcastically, right? You have a permanent place in my heart and you are partners with me in the wonderful grace of God, even though I'm here in chains for standing up for the truth of the good news of Jesus. You see, this is what God intended. God didn't intend for 61% of, of young adult Americans to be lonely. He didn't intend for 51% of, of moms of preschoolers to be lonely. He didn't intend for, for one out of three of us to be lonely. And some of you who, who are seniors with us, you're saying, I wonder what that number is for my group. Those of you who have recently retired, I, I wonder what it is for my group. Those of you who fought in, in a war, you know what it's like to lose command and control. And then when you go through retirement, you lose that same thing, don't you? You lose that sense of purpose. You lose that sense of, of community. You lose that sense of, of who, who are my people. And I can only imagine what the loneliness number is there. But God didn't intend it that way. So, what did God intend? And if we, if we go back, and I, I mentioned, you know, you could turn to Genesis chapter 1. Go, go ahead and turn to Genesis chapter 1. Because these, these first three chapters are some of my favorite in all of Scripture. Because, of course, it lays the foundation for us. And it says this, In the beginning God created the heavens and the earth, and the earth was formless and empty, and darkness was over the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. And and God said, Let there be light, and there was light. And God saw that the light was, was good. And then God said, Let there be a vault between the waters to separate water from water. And so God made that and separated the water under it from the water above it. And it was so, and God called that vault sky and it was evening and there was morning the second day and God looked at it and God saw that it was good. And he looked at the land and made it such that it could produce vegetation and he looked at the land and he said that it was good and and. For six days, he keeps on saying that it was good, and it was good, and it was good. But did did you know that the way that God created things, it was all, it was all, it wasn't. God even says so. Genesis chapter 2. God takes a look at the dude that he created. 
And the Lord God said, it's not good. And some of you women are saying, yep, (laughs) yep, not good. Until I came into his life. And some of you, you know, you wanted to straighten that guy out, but you realize straight, that straightening out project, that's kind of a, a fruitless project, right? I mean, it's, it's one of those things. But notice, Lord God said, it's not good for what? For the man to be what? What does the word alone suggest? For the man to be lonely. And so God starts to create the animals in Genesis chapter 2, and God creates a cat, and the man says, no, that won't do. And then then God creates a a cow and says, eh, you know, a little bit better. And then finally, God creates a dog, and the man says, yeah, that's my best friend. Right? Right? Oh, man, I thought that one dog was was enough, and Debbie convinced me that, no, I needed two, and so we got a puppy. In fact, that party that I showed, that was a big mess, right? Um, That that, that party, everyone came. Our kids were out in in California for like two and a half months. They they come home, and then to to Minneapolis, and they say, can we come and visit the dog? Because we got a puppy, right? And then our daughter from, from San Francisco, can, can, is it okay if I come home? I said, what do you want to come home for? So I can meet Baxter. <laughs> and so everyone ends up coming home for the weekend, not for mom and dad, but for the puppy, you know, whatever that's about. But, but e- even then, even then, as the story goes on, it turns out that, that even Fido doesn't do it for Adam. And so... God creates the woman to meet the man in his loneliness because it's, that loneliness is not good. Do you, do you see how, how God has built this into our very social structure? And so that relationship, God didn't intend for us to walk as one. He intended us to walk in relationship, in community. And so... What a beautiful thing that is. And, and now go back. So that's Genesis chapter 2 and verse 18. But go back to Genesis chapter 1 and, and verse 24 because we find out that, that the community that God created didn't start with a man and a woman. That community started way before that. And notice in Genesis chapter 1 and verse 24 says, and then God said, will, will you read these words with me? Let us make human beings in our image to be like us. And so in the image of God, he created them. Now, is there anything weird about that passage to you? I bolden the stuff that's weird. Yeah, that, that God would say, let us make human beings in our image. If If you've ever wondered, you know, where where does this doctrine of of the Trinity come from? The word doesn't even appear in Scripture. But it starts right here in Genesis chapter 1, when God is speaking and he says, let us make human beings in our image to be like us. You see, this, this beautiful, mysterious thing called the Trinity, God the Father, God the and God the Holy Spirit, the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. These, these three are, are persons within this one thing called God. And I know it, it's boggling. I know that there are different religions. Islam, for instance, that, that accuses us of being polytheistic. Uh, but, but this is what is communicated throughout Scripture, the whole of Scripture, And so, this idea of of community wasn't started when God created man and woman. 
to walk together. But it started in the very nature of God himself. You see, God didn't create us because he was lonely. God created us because he is love. And that love is shown in his own relationship between Father and Son and and Holy Spirit. And that love spilled over into his creating us. And so that's that's the foundation for, for all of this. And so when we say we are the church, the we is is so important and we can't forget it. And if I had time, I'd take you to Genesis, uh, rather to, to Acts chapter 2, but uh, I, I don't have the time to do that, but I just want to kind of summarize this, this teaching point with this. Our God, who is community, created us for community and has gathered us into community. You see those little prepositions there? Our God who is community, Genesis chapters 1, created us for community, Genesis chapter 2, and has gathered us into community. And we saw that in Philippians chapter 1. And if, if you look, at this should be a S on the back of act. Um, but I was thinking about a play, apparently, when I typed that up. Um, Acts, Acts chapter 2, when, when, when the church uh, is, is, first, is first formed after Jesus exits the scene, you, you see that they, they long to be together. And it says that, that they broke bread daily. Daily. Will you say that word with me? Daily in one another's homes. You see, when when we have the mentality of going to church, we go to church, if we're lucky, once a week, right? You tune in once a week. I mean, that's going to church. But if we are the church, it's like what what, what Paul says, "You're, you're, you're a permanent part of who I am. And that permanent part becomes a daily thing. Now, let me, let me just kind of uh, create some actionable steps uh, with this right now because I think this is so important. And if you have a camera, I mean, take a picture of that so that you can remember it. Uh, screenshot it if you're on, online with us um, because that really is, is wonderful theology right there. Pat myself on the back. Um, our God who is community, created us for community, and has gathered us into. Actually, Jesus gathered us into. And remember, the word gather is the word, come on, we're going to have to start all over again. Ecclesia, and it's the word that gets translated as church. Yo, you guys are so good. You just needed a little bit of prompting. Um, so, so good. See, this is what happens. They ask me, do I really want to have bold coffee uh, this morning? And I, I so sometimes I... Last week, I noticed I, I, I had the bold coffee before the second service, and I feel like I gypped you all uh, because I was like, I'm, it was like, man, so I'm, I used to protect my voice and not have caffeine, but now it's like, oh, forget the voice, just go for it um, because life is so much more fun. Uh, now, now, Kathy said something earlier about the women's retreat, and she apparently is going to tease you all women into signing up for the women's retreat by telling a story. Are are you going to tell a story at the women's retreat? Yeah, see, and I'm not going to even try to tease that out of her because I know where I think she's going with that, and I've heard it from so many other women, and it's this. I didn't have a friend until I went to the women's retreat. 
and we could just be silly together. Or we room together. And I had to put earplugs in because she snored. And in the morning, I was able to say, Sister, you sound like a freaking buzzsaw. Um, but, you know, and there, 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 there's, 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 there's glue that happens there, right? And this is an actionable step. If you count yourself among the 36%, you can do something about that. If, if you're concerned, ladies, and thank you for those of you who purchased and, and, and who outbid the, the underbidding cheapskates on those, uh, on, on those baskets, thank you that, 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 that you just, you know, bid and you bid and you, you bid people up and you heard someone, I really want that. And so you went in and you, 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 you jacked up the price a little bit by bidding and they outbid you. And anyway, because you know what you did? You made it possible for someone who couldn't afford to go to the retreat to go to the retreat. And if you feel you can't afford to go to the retreat, just say so. Reach out to Chris. Reach out to Kathy. Uh, you can reach Chris. Um, and this is an easy email. That's why I'd, I'm not going to give yours, Kathy, because yours, um, how do you spell Bach Hop anyway? Um, but all you have to do is say K-R-I-S, K-R-I-S at riverhillschurch.org. And... Uh, and say, I'd love to go, but I can't afford it, and we'll make a way. Another thing you can do. How many of you, and I have to say, it is so cool when, when someone has to text me after church and like if I'm supposed to go to lunch or maybe my family's at home or Debbie uh, took another car and she's at home or she's waiting outside and she says, where are you? And you know what's so cool? is when people hang around church. Now, y'all are in first service. So, I mean, we kind of kick you out, but here's, here's the thing. You can go back there. You can go back there and, and, and you can have fellowship back there. And our objective is to have coffee back. Is there coffee back there? There's, there's coffee back there. Uh, and it's, it's already there. And, and you, you can have fellowship with the early arrivals and you can just say, oh yeah, Verda's going overtime again. Um, and you, know, you can just go back there and, and have fellowship and just hang out back there if you want to. But that's, that's what's so cool. But Jessica... Prindeville and Chris Prindeville, you two stand up. Um, they, they used to do something at a form. Why do you keep pointing to your husband? No, it's not. It's your thing. You're the one who first talked to me about it, Jessica, so don't put it on your husband. You are, you are, you are one. And I went to the reaffirmation of your marriage vows so I can attest that you are one. Okay, so you are in this together. They're going to start a group. If you ever wanted to have lunch at church, they're going to start a group that uh, is uh, first and foremost about Jesus and second about, about having lunch together. And that's going to start on April 23rd. And it's going to last for six weeks to start with. Uh, actually, seven because they're going to skip Mother's Day. And they're going to go through a, a, a study called Growing Up together, and it's not, this isn't intended for, for little babies, okay, you know, growing up together. At first I thought, what, what is this, some kind of an elementary school book or something? Um, but it's, it's the four phases of spiritual growth. It's growing up together in Christ, growing up together in our understanding of who God is and, and what he's called us to do and to be. And if you're interested in that, again, you two stand up, everybody turn, look at them, say, thank you, Prindevilles. Thank you. Okay. And uh, if you want to see what they're going to be using, you can see that. And if you want to hear what they're going to be cooking, you can talk to them. But I think there's going to be barbecue uh, grills involved. So that will probably be good. Actionable step number three. How many young moms are lonely? Do you remember the number? 51%. One out of two. And you might ask, how can a mom be lonely? They got the kids. 
Have you ever tried talking to a kid? You know, it's me, 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 I'm hungry, you know? I mean, that's, and it's like, please, God, give me somebody I can talk to. And so Bethany just one day said, oh, I don't think there's a Sock Prairie Moms group. I'm just going to put something online. And the next thing she told me, oh, like four hours later, there are 32 women who are interested in the Sock Prairie Moms group. And so, voila, it's here. And if you're online with us, it doesn't matter what you believe. It doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter if you hate your kids or you love your kids. Um, if you're lonely, just you, you can hang out together, Okay. First and third Mondays of the month, and I think that goes from 9 until 11, right? 9 until 11, and we make coffee, and hopefully the cafe will be open. Actionable step number four, get involved in a small group. Now, we've already mentioned one small group. We mentioned this is kind of like another small group, not intended to be a Bible study, but just a place for fellowship, but get involved in a small group. We have multiple small groups in, in this church, and you can go on the app, and you can find where those small groups are. And if there's something that you need that, uh, that you want to uh, kind of figure out, just, just say so. I had someone come to me and say, the small group I went to is always talking about political stuff, and I don't want to go there. I, I, I don't want to hear about political stuff. I said, okay, so let's start a new group. I had someone else say, uh, the, the, the group that, that, that I went to, they're always talking about these, these conservative social issues. I'm a liberal. So great, let's start a liberal Bible study. And some of the conservatives are like, what, liberal and Bible study? Those two things can't go together. That's an oxymoron. And it's not. There are plenty of liberals who are honest and sincere Jesus followers. And there are plenty of conservatives, liberals, who are honest and sincere Jesus followers. And hopefully after you have your own studies together, you can figure out that maybe there's some way to communicate. Um, but God help us in the culture, because they certainly don't communicate in our culture anymore. But God didn't intend for it to be this way. If he created man and he created woman for community, certainly he created conservatives and liberals to, to have community as well. So maybe, and this is the dream of mine, as a church, we can restore that kind of community. Action step number five, get involved in a ministry team. There are so, there, every one of you has gifts and there, there are needs that your gifts can meet in our community. It was so cool when I heard a report back uh, from, from the, the worship and, uh, and worship arts group that they had a dinner and like, how many showed up? 48 or something like that? Some, somewhere in the, in, in the 40s showed up for this thing. And I'm like, how come you didn't invite me? Um, but see, and those were the spouses of and, and significant others of people on, in the ministry team. And so, so fellowship and community started to happen there. Say, oh, I don't like any of that stuff. Well, how many of you like to secondhand? You know, one of the greatest events that we have to get involved in and as a ministry team is just to show up here during the week. This week, this is the week, the rummage sale. You can start offloading your junk after the second service today. Please. I'll just say it this way. God help you if you try to do it after this service, okay? Um, but no, seriously, the rummage sale, there, there, there are people who hang out together. Wouldn't, wouldn't you agree, Chris, Gwen, those of you who have worked that? And there, there are people who have never been involved in this church who just come and they hang out at the rummage sale and help go around and straighten out tables. And you meet a great group of people doing it. Some people have asked, why is Dennis doing this, this coffee thing? Because I hung out at a bar one day. Oh my God. Pastor hung out at a bar? Yeah, so did Jesus. I'm not comparing myself to him. I'm just saying. And I noticed, I noticed that bartenders are better pastors than probably 70% of pastors out there in the world. You know why? Because they listen. 
And so one of the reasons I'm investing personally and we're investing in, in having a space for people just to hang out together on Wednesdays from 9 until 1 is to create that kind of a space. Come. Come to the Gathering Place Cafe. There's a specific coffee clutch that gathers from 9 until 11. Uh, the cafe opens at 8 and goes until 1, but it's a place just to hang out. There are people who work remotely here. There are groups of, of people who gather together here. Right now, we're serving somewhere in the vicinity of 25 people in that, that time period. There's probably someone there that you can meet. Shall I go on? Check your app. How many of you have a friend who has an ATV or a UTV? And you know anybody who has an ATV or a UTV? I'm going to say one, one more thing. Okay, actually, I'm going to say two more things. Next week is Palm Sunday. But even bigger than Palm Sunday in Sauk City is that next weekend in Sauk City, the laws have changed and ATVs are allowed on the streets. If it's numbered, they're not. Anything else is fair game. And so next Sunday is Palm Sunday. And on Palm Sunday, Jesus rode into Jerusalem on a donkey. But we're convinced that if Jesus were riding into Sauk City next Sunday, he'd ride in on a Kawasaki mule. Do you, do you, do you see the connection? And so next Sunday is Kawasaki mule Palm Sunday. You might see Jesus riding in on a mule, um, but bring your ATV, bring your UTV. We have exclusive ATV, UTV parking on that, that side, on the, on the north side of, of the building in the lawn. And uh, we will have an ATV, UTV blessing for anyone who wants uh, that to happen. Okay? I mean, and invite a friend. Maybe that you have someone who's lonely. Here's the deal. Usually pastors say, man, if we all did this, we could change the world, we could change our community, we could do... And I'm only interested in one thing. And that's changing your life if you're lonely. If you're at home and you're lonely to be able to change your life so that you know that there is a place where you can go where everybody knows your name. And it ain't cheers. Stick around for the second service. We're probably going to sing the song. But there's a place where, where, where you can go that people care about you. Now, granted, when people get together, it can become a freaking mess. And that's what relationships are like. So don't be surprised. But just come. Come. Get involved. If you're online, you've never been in this building, I'd encourage you to send an email to online at riverhillschurch.org and say, I'd like to get connected. And we'll help you connect with people either online or in this place. We have hybrid small groups. There's no reason why we can't do that. And the final actionable thing, and I have to kick you out of here, and I have to stop and shut up, and everybody clapped. Um, stop it. <coughs> Is this. Take out your app. I'm sorry, take out your phone and open your app. If you do not have the app, I want to encourage you to download the app. You can go to any of the app stores, go to RHC Sock. Now we have fixed something. Now it's up to you to fix the other side of this. And if you go to groups, every one of you should be in a group that's called Hillsters. And we've fixed that group so that you can see each other. But you can't see each other if over your name, David, it's just a D. you got to have your face. And so here's the challenge. Before you leave this place today, put your picture up there. And if you don't know how to put your picture up there, I know five people in this room who do, and Bethany's the first one. And she's going to stand right at the back, right there, and she is going to help you do that. Now, if you're looking on the Hillster 
uh, group on your RH, on your River Hills app right now, and you see somebody in this room who does not have a picture posted, why don't you walk up to that person and say, can I snap your picture and help you post it? I'm going to be that forward and that obnoxious. And you know why? Because if you want to get beyond loneliness and you want to help other people get beyond their loneliness, being able to recognize a person's face and connect it with a name is the first place to start. And so let's do that. God is community. He created community. He created us for community. And Jesus gathered this thing called the church for community. And will you say those four words with me again? We are the church. And no one should ever stand alone in this beautiful, messy thing called the church. Let's pray. Lord God, we commit ourselves afresh this morning to the church. And God, we realize that, that there are there's way too much. It, it's, it's a pandemic of loneliness in our world. It's an epidemic of loneliness in, in our country, God. And we realize, just from what we read in the few short passages in your word today, that you never intended for it to be this way. And so, God, by the power of your Holy Spirit, remind us day in and day out Remind us each hour of the day that you created us for something better and that we might be the solution for someone else's loneliness or the solution for loneliness might be in this place if we are ourselves lonely and don't know where to turn. God, send us from this place to be the church and to help those who are lonely. And we commit ourselves to that in Jesus' name. And all those who agreed said. Amen. Have a great week and thank you for your attention to God's word today.